So while the next uh, speaker gets ready, we have uh, the next uh, presentation, which is cancelled. Unfortunately, they could not come. Uh, but they are from Argentina, and we have other people from Argentina here. This is the Club de Robotica. And can you stand up? Because uh, they came last year. Oh, please stand up. Please stand up, yeah. Please, yeah. Everybody, look at that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, take your applause because uh, you went a long way. And uh, I know that last year uh, you told the staff after, afterwards that you were supported by your Ministry of Science and Technology, which is wow, you know, like open source wow. And, uh, and that, yeah, come on, let's say it like wow, wow. wow. <laughs> And then when you came back, you went on TV and different media. So that's another, wow. <laughs> so uh, technically, uh, well, Argentina knows about the Open Source CubeSat workshop, right? <laughs> so that's cool. And uh, so, but with no further ado, I'll, I'll talk about our next speaker. So he's an Aikido ka. And uh, he doesn't grow his hair as he would look like Steven Seal, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, he calls himself uh, Soft Electromechanics and with all those special skills that allows him to drive a motorcycle very fast while he's half asleep, and uh, he also avoids the speed light flashes, and, and which makes him come on time at this workshop. That's cool. So he will share with us uh, his project at uh, Libos Face Foundation and, uh, and talk about pocket cubes, modules, and rocket telemetry. So this is Ilias. Daradimos, if I say it right, yeah, the stage correct. is yours. Thank you, Elias, from Libre Space Foundation. Okay, so that's how I check if the slides go back and forth without revealing anything. Okay, so hello, audience. Uh, I usually wake up late, so good morning, everyone. Um, yeah. That's where we are. So in uh, this presentation, we're going to talk about a connector, a diode, and whether we can. So um, based on uh, our previous experience uh, in Libre Space Foundation uh, from the AFSAT uh, project, which is the first open source satellite currently uh, circling the Earth, waiting to uh, go out in a blaze of glory in a few months. <laughs> um, we decided to explore the pocket uh, tube ecosystem and, so, and uh, throw some open source stuff there. Um, we found out that uh, the University of Delft uh, has a proposal for um, a standard which is called PQ9. It's a, like an evolution of the PQ50, which uh, incorporates like a 50 pin connector. So you mostly get connectors with a little of PCB around. So they've gone with a PQ9, which is a 9-pin connector. And um, uh, that's, uh, that's the format of uh, the PCB, and that's basically the connector. And as you can see, there are two data lines, and they propose that we go with RS-485. And um, we did not like that much because uh, we, find, we find it a bit uh, limiting, so we kind of deviated a bit from that, and uh, we actually call it PQ90s. Uh, so um, the first thing to do was uh, fire up KiCad and build like a dev board, because when you build stuff, you want a dev board to like, connect everything there. Nothing spe special here, just uh, connectors and uh, a way to power uh, stuff around. And then we started with the communications model, which is probably the most uh, important thing uh, on a satellite, since you want to be able to somehow communicate with it. So um, the, what we decided to do is actually uh, build a combined comms and the OBC module with uh, probably ditching the OBC part and uh, making a, a different architecture where there is no OBC on the, on the satellite. So, and, uh, oh, so we needed uh, some data logging, like large storage, so we added an SD card and the UHF transceiver. Um, it's set up at this uh, uh, modulation and rate plus an RTC clock, because you not always want to want to know what time it is. So the platform is built around the STM32. It's proven in space uh, from the upset project. 
Um, and uh, software-wise, we use uh, FreeRD Free OS and uh, the hardware abstraction layer that comes from uh, the ST toolkit. So roughly the diagram is like that. So it's like the, the MCU communicating with other submodules and the microSD to log data, and that's the RF part where you transmit and receive uh, the information you want. Uh, for the radio, we're using this uh, quite nice chip which does like almost everything SK uh, on regard to modulation. It has a quite decent uh, uh, transfer rate and uh, you, it's a transceiver, so uh, you can also uh, listen to uh, telecommanding or whatever you would need. And uh, now with the CAN bus, we decided to go there because uh, at first the, there's um, some hardware implementation inside the MCU which uh, actually allows each subsystem to be like the, the master. So for example, uh, instead of having an OBC computer that would uh, ask the EPS so power and then ask the sensors, give me some science data, uh, you can get rid, that, get rid of that model and uh, go with, uh, I am the science module and I want to send some data down to Earth. So uh, comms, just send this to Earth. And um, it, it would make, I think, uh, the whole structure more flexible, not on, only for uh, pocket cubes, but for other platforms too. And uh, usually with this kind of uh, bus, as, long, as well as with uh, the RS-485, you need a transceiver to do that. And it's like a differential line thing where uh, the signal is nice and balanced between two cables and you get no noise, et cetera, et cetera. And we tried to replace this with that, which is quite smaller, I must admit. <laughs> So according to an application note by Siemens, if uh, the length of your data bus is small enough and uh, by small, like less than a meter, and for pocket uh, cubes it's like long distance, you can actually get away with it by adding just a diode on its uh, transceiver channel and uh, like a pull-up resistor over there. Uh, we tested that successfully up to like 250 kilobps and uh, it works fine. Uh, of course, um, we need to like torture it a bit and uh, test it under uh, rough conditions, but uh, we believe this can actually work. And uh, the good thing is that since you are releasing the second data line that was used like as a pair, now you have a second data channel where you can have like two um, uh, communication channels independent on, uh, on the same system, if you want to do that. Um, so the next thing we're currently building is like a generic sensor module. So um, this is actually just an MCU with uh, uh, connectors for an I2C UART and four uh, A2D converters where you can use it uh, either as a differential A2D or just two A2D lines. And the two of these connect, all of them, you can power them on or off. And two of them also have PWM, so you can actually uh, maybe control the, the, the voltage or do stuff uh, that the PWM can, uh, can do. Um, it's not finished yet, but uh, the concept around it was that uh, um, you may have like a science module and you do not want to build in it uh, the logic that would integrate it with the uh, rest of the systems. So it's, a, it's like a generic board that uh, it can attach like beneath it and work with that. And the last, uh, well, it's not like, a, it's not actually for satellite usage. This is a, I call it dummy PS, dummy power system. Um, we use it for testing uh, of a battery in the solar cell. Uh, it's not intended for space. All it does is uh, charge uh, um, using the MPTT um, way of uh, getting the power from the solar cell and uh, charges the battery and that's it. And also has like two switches for on and off. But we use that when we want to have a system completely like off-grid and test uh, something. So that's uh, 
like a battery pack for the CubeSat, for the pocket cube uh, systems. Um, you can find all this on uh, our repositories. Everything is uh, on uh, GitLab because the other one got acquired by you know who. Um, all the hardware and all the software, of course, is open, and uh, you will see many iterations of it. And uh, there are many uh, things there that are actually problems, uh, uh, mostly about the software that people are searching how to do that. And uh, well, it can also be a guide for uh, maybe trivial or not uh, stuff. So for the future, um, we want to move to the 1.0 version of the communications board. Um, expand a bit the connectivity of the, of the MCU. Uh, reduce the RF components because they're quite a lot and uh, we are trying to reduce that to make more space and actually manage to add a tin can, like a, an RF shield on top of that. Of that. And uh, of course, as with every uh, space uh, hardware, we need to torture it. So we will throw it in the oven and then remove all the air and see what happens. Hopefully nothing. Uh, or, well, not nothing, nothing is bad. So it will work. <laughs> and also we, since it's like a small platform, we can actually use it on a high altitude ba balloon and rocket flights and give it some real, um, atmospheric conditions or uh, forces when you put it on a small rocket. And finally, we would really like to fly a space mission. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. Question time. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. So we already have a question, of course. That's yes. great. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Uh, just a question that came to my mind. Uh, why get rid of a differential canvas? Why did we do that? Yeah. One wire. One wire. Yeah. That's it. Instead of two, you get one wire and you get rid of the transceivers, which means uh, less uh, space on the PCB. And uh, since the size of it, ah, I should have told you that. So the size of it, uh, it's quite interesting because it's the answer to the universal question. It's 42 by 42 millimeters. And uh, you do not have uh, much room for uh, all your systems to go by. So uh, the communications board uh, was uh, just, we just managed to just fit everything on one side and the SD card and the small battery went on the uh, other side of the PCB. Um, but uh, the layout of the components does not allow for the tin can to go around unless we make a custom one. So if we want to go with uh, all the self components, we have to um, have a bit of a room. So removing, removing the transceiver also saves power and saves space. And if this proves to work quite well, we can actually uh, go with it. What about noise? But what about noise, exactly? Yes, exactly. Uh, according to the application node, uh, short lines could get away with it. But again, we need to test whether th this, uh, this works. Hi, uh, you mentioned that RS-485 was limiting. Um, could was? you, what you said uh, you found RS-485 uh, limiting. Yes. Uh, can you talk a bit more about that? Yes, the thing is RS-485 is like a um, hardware thing. So uh, when, on respect of uh, the microcontroller side, um, you see it as like another UART. While with CAN bus, uh, you have hardware queues, so one subsystem can uh, say, okay, send like these 10 messages and I'm done with it. And the hardware will um, uh, deal with the message to send them or give a negative uh, acknowledge where the message were, uh, came back, where they were delivered. And uh, also you get like a message level notifications, which is uh, way better than to implement this from scratch and try to implement a multi-master RS-485 uh, system which, from what I read, it's a bit of a hell. And it needs a negative coverage. Please repeat the question. Let's not go there. Ah. Ideas? Yeah. 
please repeat the, the question when they are not cached by microphone so we have them on recall. The question? Repeat the question when you don't have them on recall because so we can have that offline. Just, oh, just to repeat okay. the question. Yeah. Yeah. So the question was, uh, what's wrong with uh, RS-485? No, that one, oh. we got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. We have time for 42 questions. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No one? So how much do you think you need to build one of those? How much? stack of CubeSat, yeah, how much? Well, not much, actually, if you do it yourself. It can be quite uh, cheap, say, less than 100, less than 50 yeah. for a comms uh, PCB. But of course, uh, um, if you want to get, you want a flight model, uh, you may want to spend the extra money to use some uh, quality components and uh, quality PCBs. Uh, but yeah, the cost is quite low. Yeah. So say who you are and ask your question. Uh, so I'm Joe, and um, hello, Joe. Hello. <laughs> um, so Ilias, I wondered whether you uh, might like to talk about uh, what are your feelings and what 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 options are there in terms of uh, launch for pocket cubes to low Earth orbit. <laughs> Okay, so the options. Um, well, you can always uh, piggyback on a CubeSat, or you can maybe find a way to uh, throw three or four of them in the CubeSat form, and then when they come out, they become like four. But you, you pay for one CubeSat uh, payload, and uh, I don't know, maybe in the future, if uh, Joy is willing to help, Maybe we can get it up there ourselves, but it's like a long and <laughs> far away dream. We have another question over there. Oh, where's the question? Oh, on the back. On the back. Oh, okay, okay. No, but, but but as Bruce said, Norad no, don't like PQs, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They're ah. not <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that was the point <laughs> that we heard earlier. Yeah. Norad no. doesn't like PQs. It's too yeah. small. I think it will be very hard to deploy them because of the NORAD regulation, so maybe we're not launching from the US. So it yeah, you answered actually your own question, yeah. which is <laughs> if you do not launch from the US, yeah, you can get up there. And you get your visa canceled, yeah? <laughs> I, it, it depends, if, if it doesn't have my name on it, maybe I can get away with it. So uh, actually it wasn't the one that you saw on the slides from someone, el someone else that was gonna <laughs> get the <laughs> Yeah. One question. Uh, when you design uh, this sort of uh, CubeSats or this time uh, pocket cubes, yep. uh, do you consider um, so the strategy for the orbiting the, the, the pocket cube or do you make some calculation about the lifetime in space or this, the kind of, the, this kind of regulation that now exists? That, uh, because the pocket cube, I don't know, I, I haven't done any kind of calculation of this type, for this size, but I don't know if the drag that you can find in the atmosphere for this small uh, thing, mm -hmm. uh, if, it, it, if it can help to the orbit it or not, or maybe you can stay there too long um, and it's too small to, to monitor it. Well, it, it makes sense that since it's like a one quarter of the area, if it points on the small side, it would you have less uh, aerodynamic drag, so probably you get a bit more time. And the other aspects, uh, since uh, the components used are uh, roughly uh, the same or similar ones to a CubeSat, uh, it should, uh, uh, regarding to the space environment, last. Uh, about how much a cube set would last, which is from zero to three uh, to twelve or eighteen months, depending on the orbit, or, or even longer, depending the, the altitude. Yes. So, so for that, that thing, so I think that uh, when uh, we work in cube sets, we have to take into account uh, that the cube set it doesn't become at the end uh, a space debris. Mm. So. Yes. Okay. okay. Ask your question quick before Arthur ask his own question. It's cool. <laughs> I'm curious uh, how much power the, uh, the 
the, this, this draws, and, and, and kind of in combination with that, I'm curious how much power a solar subsystem of that form factor can actually produce, i.e. is it viable on orbit to be solar powered for an enduring mission? Well, mostly it depends on uh, um, the mission requirements, on um, the aspect of uh, actually the, the science part. Because the, um, when it's in standby, without any optimizations, we are at around uh, 10 milliamps, but it's without optimizations, so we can go lower than that. Uh, the, the transmission power is uh, around one and a half watts, so um, this is a significant uh, power drain, but it's very intermittent, so higher data rates, less time, radio zone. Um, uh, the comms can manage it, but if you have like a sensor that needs like uh, two amps of continuously for the entire mission to just run its science, maybe that would be a problem. So it's more of the science payload than uh, the standard uh, systems. Let me, let me flip the question slightly then. How many watt hours could you acquire from a solar system in one orbit so I can kind of calculate how much science you could do in one orbit? Well, it, it, it depends on the size of the, of the pocket cube. So one P is like a cube of this size. Right. And uh, uh, if you go from that, or you, you're really creative on how you're going to fold uh, solar panels in, um, you can get, I would say, maybe half uh, the power a CubeSat would get, but you have to be really creative to do that. Yeah. But it's, uh, I, I, I can give you, I would like to give you a number, but. Have you characterized how the radio is going to work and whether the radio will actually work from space to ground, which is a, a big cause of failure in satellites? Uh, for example, the phase mar I'm sorry, the fade margin, mm -hmm. uh, the effects of Doppler. Um, uh, have you tried those things at all? Because this chip is obviously made for power meters, not satellites. Yes. So there, there is a uh, uh, ref amplifier there, so it can boost uh, the power quite enough. So from our experience with Upsat, we were at around one watt and the reception was uh, quite good. So with one and a half, which can, we can actually uh, decrease it if we need it. Um, uh, it should be vi vi viable to have a communication. Um, now, uh, the ground tests uh, showed uh, a good range. It was tested in the city environment. So uh, extrapolating from that, uh, I think we're more than good. But yeah, still no numbers. But uh, uh, with the Saturn station, you should be able to receive it. Like OK. OK, thank you very much. And uh, we'll discuss that later. Thank, th please thank Ilya. Yeah. So I'm doing machine learning for spacecraft at ESOC, and I uh, would love to do embedded machine learning. So when I see this CubeSat so small, uh, I'm not doing machine learning yet on those kind of things, but I'd love to. So I think I'll build one and try to do so with a reduced machine learning, but that would be lovely. 